lot of artists came through me first to get on the radio on Hot 107. Like who? Atlanta. Rich Homie Quans, 21 Savages, Futures, Alley Boy, Big Crit, The Rich Kids, YFN Lucci, Bankroll Fresh, Dope Boy Raw, uh, Young Greatness, Marlo. I mean, so many people, man. I mean, because I was down here working. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. I already knew in high school that I wanted to do communications. This wasn't nothing that I just kind of stumbled upon. When I was a senior, I said, if I go to school, I'm going to school for communications. Because I always love music and radio and stuff like that. So when I went to Clark, I was over there doing my thing. And then one of my classmates, Ryan Moore, he was a classmate in one of my classes. And when we were being in school, you know, I always had good relationships with my teachers and stuff like that. I had my classmates, and I'd just be in there just kicking shit every damn every day, damn just day. having a good time. Yeah. Because I like to have a good time wherever I go. I'm going to have a good time. So Ryan said, hey, man, you need to bring that personality to the radio station. And I said, man, how you going to get me the radio station? You in class with me right now, fool. But he was already he working as a it. sales assistant yeah. at that time. Yeah. Hence... The importance of education again because it puts you around those people. I would have never been around him if I wouldn't have went to school. That's right. Imagine me growing up in Atlanta. I didn't even know where the radio station was at. No. I just heard it on the radio, but I didn't know where it was at. Yeah. So my partner, he said, hey, man, give me your resume. And then I went up there. And when I got up there, I became a volunteer, then I became an intern, and then mm -hmm. I finally got ho uh, hired on as a board operator. Mm -hmm. After I got hired on as a board op, uh, I was just in that thing working it on out and learning the game as I went and see for me when I came in I came in off the sweat of my own brow so yeah. I didn't have no industry connection saying that he the one or we gonna rock with him and we gonna rock you know that he's gonna be you know the next in line so for me I kind of had to play the background and buck the system and just keep on trying until I finally got on the air which was overnights and I was overnight and how long did it take you to get from first step in the door till that okay uh i probably got hired in yeah no nah, that was well, that i got the uh volunteership probably junior year of college okay so that's two years in college then i, I got hired fresh out of college then i didn't get on the air i got hired in like 2015 i didn't get on the air to like 2008 I mean, uh, no, yeah, I got on, I got, uh, I graduated in 2005, so then oh, I got okay. on the air in 2008. So that was probably so good, three years? Yeah, good three to five, five years, years of okay. volunteering and trying yeah. to figure it out before I even got on the air. Um, but I say that to say that was five years of fucking around <laughs> before I even got an opportunity <laughs> yeah. to do anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. now I'm sitting here looking crazy because now I'm thinking to myself, man, what the hell I done signed up for? It ain't that much money going on in this yeah, thing. Yeah. And now I'm trying to, you know, we taught growing up that if you work hard, you're going to get promoted and you're going to get the opportunities. However, it doesn't necessarily go like that with, within the industry. So I just, uh, when I see you, you I, I got to ask you a question about the radio. Like, yeah. like it's so many guys I know in the city and where I'm at in Texas a lot of times, a lot of those guys I interview on the radio, they be complaining that the artists do because their music don't get played on the radio. And I just w always try to take the opportunity to get them to understand. So from your perspective, what was it like down here when the local guy was trying to get his music played? See, that was the beauty of Atlanta, man. We, I mean, Atlanta was always on fire. And for me, I became that guy. Mm. So a lot of artists came through me first to get on the radio on Hot 107 like who? in Atlanta. Uh, you got Rich Homie Quans, 21 Savages, Futures, uh, Alley Boy, Big Crit, uh, the Rich Kids. I mean, so many people, man. I mean, YFN Lucci. Wow. You know, these Bankroll Fresh, Dope Boy Raw, uh, Young Greatness. Wow. Wow. Uh, Marlo, I mean, so many people, man. I mean, because I was down here working. Yeah, and you, but that's the, I was that, down here that working. That roster was talented, but at some point they had to come in the door. And what yeah. you're saying is, when they came through the door, you was there to open it a lot of times. Oh yeah, from no, your I, I, I bust the gate wide open and yeah. I left it open because what happened to me was I realized that I was having an overnight career in radio and it wasn't going nowhere fast. And I felt like maybe my talent was being suppressed or maybe I wasn't getting the opportunity to be as great as I felt like I was. And I was like, okay, 
instead of getting pissed the fuck off and saying this is some bullshit. I said, how can I transmute this energy into something positive and make a real live impact out here? So I said, you know what? I'm going to use my platform and open up the door for the next generation to be able to get on the radio because they couldn't get on the radio. Yeah, yeah. You had to be hot to get, get on, on the, the radio. radio. Wasn't nobody mm -hmm. just putting no records on the radio. So for me, I said, you know what? I'm going to just break that whole thing up. You ain't got to be hot to, to be on the radio no more. Just come and holler at me. I'm going to put your... If the song... See, my whole thing is I had a qualification, though. Your music had to be jamming. Don't come bringing me no bullshit trying to get on the radio because see now I'm already looking crazy bringing you in here. So then my boss, now I'm playing some bullshit on the radio, then my boss can be like, man, what the fuck are you in there doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at least give me a hit. So when they hit, they're like, okay, he's doing his job. You know, so a lot of the artists, they was bringing them hits, man. And then I would also say, bring me something that ain't talking about killing nobody. Yeah, yeah, that's We hard. ain't doing that. That's we hard. ain't gonna be sitting over here promoting no killing or nothing. Just bring me a damn good song. I'm gonna play it on the radio. I'm gonna do an interview with you and I'm gonna uh, help you break this thing. Wow, I, I said, I, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So the whole time whenever you were at the, still at the radio station, you were still teaching. How mm -hmm. long into the radio station did you decide that I don't want to teach anymore, I'm just gonna do radio? Okay, so now. And why did you leave? Cause you know, when you think about teaching you helping a lot of kids oh, yeah. oh, and no, people that, and stuff like story. that that's a good story both of those kind of coincide with each other at the same time so after i had been doing radio for about 10 years my old professor professor will that actually taught me how to do radio at clark and he had left from over there he was like they needed another teacher but rewind it back to when i was at clark Atlanta university i was thinking about becoming a teacher and majoring in education mm -hmm. other than radio because i was thinking to myself how likely is it gonna be for me to get a job in radio? Now, I had a lot of educators in my family as well, so it was like, hell, I know my auntie some teachers. I can go over here and teach something and keep the party going and stuff like that. That's, you know, I can see that. But as far as radio, I don't have a real Connect. point of reference for that. Right. But then I was like, nah, fuck that. I'm gonna go ahead and chase this radio. So when I started doing radio, as I got deep into my career, that opportunity opened up for my old professor Will asking me to come back and teach. Because mm -hmm. uh, that was always going to be my plan, too. I was going to teach down the line yeah, anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So about 10 years in, that's when I started teaching at Clark Atlanta. Teach, uh, and I was over the whole radio department over there. Oh, that's hard. And uh, WSTU, the students over there, I mean, they were awesome. And the students was... It was just great to be able to give them real time information and to help them be able to skip some of the stuff that I failed at along the way. So while teaching over there, I was still doing my show mm -hmm. at Hot 1079, the 10 spot at night. Mm -hmm. So I was breaking records at night and I was uh, interview uh, and I was teaching. teaching by day. And then COVID happened. Mm. And when COVID happened, I had to lose both of those jobs. And that's what but yeah. teaching, you would think you could still go online and teach because everything became virtual at, at COVID for teachers. Well, it was online, but it was still the mandates. Mm. It was the mandates that came across. Yeah, you know, when yeah. they put out the mandates, yeah, well, you have to, have to, you know, and see, yeah. I don't know what was going on with the companies. If their situations might have been affected during yeah, that time yeah, by yeah. not, you know, implementing the mandates and stuff like that, but. All of those situations came down from corporate. It wasn't never a situation where, oh, you out of here, you got to go. It was like, right. hey, man, you going to go get you the jab did, or not? Yeah, you going to get like, the shot or exactly. you? Exactly. I know what it was. I've exactly. yeah. seen that. I yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.